In an earlier part of the lesson, we saw how to create a scatter plot directly from a pandas data frame. We'll now see how to use matplotlib to control the appearance of the scatter plot and also to add a best fit curve to the plot. We can start by reloading the catfalls data. In order to simplify the code a little bit, I'm going to assign the series for the two columns from which we are getting data into named objects, stories fallen and injury rate. In order to create the scatter plot, I will create a single figure and add one subplot to it. I'll then input the x and y values into the scatter method and create the scatter plot. I want to add some additional features now to this plot. I can use the NumPy library to do a polynomial fit to the data in this data set. I'm going to start by doing a first order polynomial which will result in fitting a straight line. The function that I'm generating in the end is going to be called p. I will now recreate the plot, but I will add an additional line to the plot that uses the function to generate predicted y values and then plot that as a line in addition to plotting the points using scatter. I will also add a legend to the upper left of the diagram. As you can see, a linear plot doesn't fit very well, so let's go back and change the order of the polynomial fit to second order, and it'll then fit the best parabola to the data. Now when I regenerate the plot, I see that the parabola fits the data much more closely. Unfortunately, it looks kind of chunky here. You see corners instead of a smooth curve. That's because it generates values for each of the data points in the regular data set. So if I wanted to have a smoother curve, I would need to figure out a way to generate more data points for the best fit line. There's another useful kind of plot that's similar to a scatter plot, and this is an error bar plot. This is useful if we have some form of error bars like standard error or 95% confidence intervals that we want to add to show the range of error around each of the data points. These error ranges are not generated automatically, so you have to calculate them from somewhere else. What I've done here is to just make some fake upper and lower deviations. You'll see that for the upper deviation, I'm entering them as a list. For the lower deviation, I'm entering them as a series. This is just simply to show that matplotlib is pretty loose about what it will take as the values. It can be a list, it can be a series, it can be a NumPy array, pretty much any kind of one-dimensional data item. So when I use the error bar method, I put in the x, the y, and then a list which contains the upper and lower deviations. So this gives me a little bit of the range of error associated with each of the data points.